A massive report in Vanity Fair by Gabriel Sherman details how Rupert Murdoch's massive media empire has either imploded on itself already or will implode on itself very soon as the 92 year old billionaire now stares down the consequences of his own actions. Now from shady business deals with Trump to Murdoch's insane hypocrisy on COVID and even an email divorce. There is an email divorce involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, modern. S- strap in for one hell of a story. So before we get to all the details, uh, we will first point out that the vast majority of Sherman's reporting is cited to anonymous sources. Look, there are anonymous sources in news reports all the time. Doesn't necessarily mean that this is made up. I don't think this is made up, but I just wanted to mention that. So consider um, some of this stuff, uh, like for instance, (laughs) well, there are too many angles to get into. It's a very lengthy report, there are different angles to it. We're gonna cover what we found the most interesting. According to Sherman, Murdoch, for instance, pushed Trump and his administration to act in lockstep with Murdoch's own policy interests. What? What a shocker. I hope that doesn't spread through other industries. Is there gambling in this establishment? Game changer. (laughs) Yeah, no, I mean, of course. Uh, Of course, there's that relationship. You can see it play out in real time, but let's give you the details as uh, reported by Sherman. One source with direct knowledge of their conversations told me Murdoch lobbied Trump to punish Facebook and Google for siphoning his newspaper's advertising revenue. In 2019, Trump's Justice Department launched an antitrust investigation of Google. In 2021, Google settled and struck a lucrative content sharing deal with Murdoch. There's more to to this part of the story. In Mm -hmm. fact, Sherman writes that the source Also said Murdoch pushed Trump to open up land for fracking to boost the value of Murdoch's fossil fuel investments. The Trump administration released nearly 13 million acres of federally controlled land to fracking companies. Mm -hmm. I remember when Trump did that, we didn't know the Murdoch component to it at the time. But I also remember how upset some Republican voters were about that because Turns out Republican voters also like to enjoy public lands. So they're mm-hmm. like, what, what are we doing here? Why are we opening up these lands for private interests to do fracking or whatever? Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, I know how passionately you feel about these issues mm-hmm. uh, having to do with fracking, drilling for oil, and its impact on climate change. Thoughts on this, John? I think that as usual, it is very easy for you as a member of the media <laughs> to attack Trump. But what I want our viewers to remember is that they're coming for you, but Trump is in the way. Mm. That's what I get out of this is that he was in the position he was as a president to advance the interests of and protect the poorest conservatives in the country. All of whom I presume will have reports coming in Vanity Fair had constant phone calls with Trump and were able to just say what all legislation should be going forward. Like, not a single conservative is going to read that, obviously. I don't think that they read Vanity Fair. As with everything else, the right wing has poisoned Vanity Fair and, you know, sites like it and all that. Um, but this is what he's there to do. This is the he's not he's not talking to the people like chanting on the side of the road outside of Mar-a-Lago. Mm-hmm. Those are the, not the ones who are determining his agenda. He'll occasionally throw them um, a red meat or at least something they have been trained to believe is meat. Exactly, it gets yep. them excited and everything. But when it comes to, it's not even that it's necessarily all wrong. Like I think that the opening up the extra territory for fracking is totally needless. I don't even. I'm, I don't like. I have a strong position on whether Facebook or Google deserve an antitrust investigation or not. Um, they are massive companies. Right. They definitely deserve to be reined in. But if they're reined in, it shouldn't be only when and in the particular style of the interests of another major media mogul. Yeah, it shouldn't be on behalf of a billionaire media mogul mm-hmm. like Rupert Murdoch. And honestly, as I read the details about the favors that Trump did for Murdoch. I began to understand a little better the kind of rage that Trump felt on election night when (laughs) Fox was willing to be the first to call Arizona for Biden, right? Because in his mind, it's like quid pro quo, not quo, quid pro quo. Depends, it probably applies to crows too. (laughs) Maybe, maybe. Um, But there's a little bit more in terms of like political favors for Murdoch. As Sherman also writes, Murdoch, who sources say, 
has become more pro-life in recent years, encouraged Trump to appoint judges who would overturn Roe v. Wade. Rupert wanted Trump's Supreme Court justices in so they could make abortion illegal, a source who spoke to Murdoch said. But, and I don't think it, that was just about Murdoch, to be fair. Uh, there were evangelical voters who had supported Trump. I mean, he was killing multiple birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. I think that phrase is now considered inappropriate, apologies. But nonetheless, like They're he, innocent. yeah, he, you know, he, there were a lot of different people he was seeking to placate with the appointment of these right wing anti choice judges. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Um, look, we can't be particularly surprised by this. I'm glad that it's being reported on. It does definitely seem, I, I don't, it's probably needless to bring this up again, but. We've pointed out like that which he's being like investigated for right now, what he's arraigned for when it comes to the hush money payments. Like, um, I think he definitely did that stuff. It should mm -hmm. definitely be investigated. But like, are you telling me that like that's worse than him opening up millions of acres of federal land because a rich a hole told him to, so that he could personally profit? It's so weird how our politics is formulated. Like, you hope. That the politicians will do like a weird, needless side thing that's against the law, because that's the only way you can get them. All the stuff that they do that's horrible in terms of policy, in terms of foreign policy, literally getting people killed, all of that's totally cool. Mm -hmm. You have no chance of anything happening there. I hope he made a phone call to Georgia. Like, that's the only way we can get him. Like, re Republicans, you know, like suppressing the vote. In unprecedented ways, year after year after year, that's totally legal. That's totally cool. I hope that he personally calls the Secretary of State. It's just weird to get put into that position. Like these sorts of conversations should be illegal. Setting policy in this way should be illegal. Oh, I mean, I totally agree with you on that. I mean, there are so many conflicts of interest that, like transparent, like overt conflicts of interest in Congress, in our system of government, and there's never any consequences for it. Right, and I think this is a good example of it. I don't know if this reporting changes a damn thing in the minds of any Trump supporter, but this is, it's what we suspected was happening behind the scenes and now we have confirmation of that. What I will take a little bit of pleasure in is how much Rupert Murdoch hated the fact that he needed to rely on Trump coverage to keep his ratings up. So Sherman writes, it's ironic that Murdoch's fortunes would become entwined with Trump's because Murdoch found Trump appalling. Which by the way, Rupert Murdoch is garbage, right? So like, I just love how he's throwing stones while he's in a glass house. But mm -hmm. Rupert knew he was an idiot, a person close to Murdoch said. Murdoch was a longtime champion of immigration reform and free trade and loathed Trump's native nativism and no nothingism. Yeah, yeah. Well, that that was the amazing thing about the beginning of the Trump era was that for the first time, Fox News became anti-immigrant. <laughs> it was the default position of every one of their hosts going back since the beginning. I mean, it's gotten maybe worse, but Lou Dobbs has been trash on that topic years and years and years and years. Hundred percent. Glenn Beck. Tucker Carlson, Let, Tucker well, Carlson's segments on immigration, even prior yeah. to the Trump administration, was abhorrent, disgusting, hateful. Yeah, yeah. Like I get, I guess the idea, if that reveals anything, the idea is, in the same way that like Tucker Carlson individually might be lying to his viewers, mm -hmm. the network, from the point of view of Rupert Murdoch, apparently, if he believes that what Fox News does will lead to his actual policy preferences, then Fox, as an entity, is lying to its viewers. By demonizing immigrants, caravans, all that, but then assuming that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But once the Republicans take over, they're still going to do some sort of immigration reform because it's going to advance certain business interests. Mm -hmm. Like I think it probably reveals that more than anything else. Now, this part I thought was fascinating to say the least. So, the Dominion lawsuit is where I, I, I want to focus most of the attention because you know. The, Fox News puts on a brave face publicly, but behind the scenes, it seems like there's quite a bit of panic taking place, including with Rupert Murdoch. So the Dominion lawsuit filings have revealed that things are not going quite as Murdoch had planned. So after the 2020 election, Murdoch told Lachlan and Suzanne Scott, and Lachlan's his son, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lachlan yeah. Murdoch and Suzanne Scott. That Fox hosts should say Biden won and move on, according to a source who spoke to Murdoch. At one point, Murdoch even lobbied Trump to concede. 
Rupert called Trump before Biden's inauguration to tell him to accept defeat graciously. And <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, and that he had left a good legacy and that his stolen election stuff would drag everyone down, the sources said. Some of that's true. Now, Trump refused. That's also true. Trump threatened to start his own channel and put Fox out of business, the source said. Oh, I wish he would. Again, like the, the thing that's most revealing to me or enlightening to me about this report is why Trump was experiencing this red hot rage against Fox. Like mm -hmm. we didn't know about this phone call. Can you imagine being the person who hits up Trump to be like, yo, bro, you need just just concede. It's mm -hmm. time to concede. Yeah. After your network happened to be the first to call Arizona. For Biden. Yeah, yeah. Let's also acknowledge that. I, I get that it's been clear from the very beginning that Trump, like, will never get over the fact that they called Arizona. But can we also be clear that if they hadn't, everything would have gone the same way. Other people would have called it first. Mm -hmm. Then Fox would have had to have called it because, and I know this is inconvenient to acknowledge. Biden won the state, and even if Biden hadn't won the state, he still would have won the election. So what's the difference? Mm -hmm. Finally, Murdoch was horrified as he and his then wife, Jerry Hall, watched the January 6th Capitol riot unfold from home. Murdoch told Hall that Trump was trying to kill Mike Pence because he was passing the presidency to Biden, said a source who spoke with Murdoch that day. Rupert kept calling the White House, Trump, Jared, Sean Hannity, Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, trying to get Trump to stop it, the source oh, said. Paul Ryan wasn't able to stop it, that's weird. But call him Paul Ryan, call I know, me, I, I have as much influence. I, I know, seriously. No, but you know what's amazing? So you have Rupert Murdoch trying to do everything and anything possible to get Trump to stop. Just stop, concede, do something about the rioters in the Capitol. But on air, what did we see on air at Fox? Yeah. So why don't you get control over your network, bro? Like what's going on? You have Tucker Carlson repeating lies about how, oh no, 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 they weren't Trump supporters, it was Antifa. And then later saying that they're, no, no, they were just peaceful tourists and like changing, you know, just constant disinformation that aids and abets Donald Trump's bad behavior. Mm -hmm. So instead of calling Trump, because you know he's not gonna listen to a damn word that you have to say, why don't you? actually have a little bit of accountability within your network, which is just spouting constant lies about the outcome of the election and mm. about the January 6th riots. The answer that question. Yeah. Why call him instead of doing that? I, I think for the same reason that virtually every Republican has made the decisions they have since mid to late 2015, utter cowardice. Rupert mm -hmm. Murdoch wanted the problem to go away. He didn't want to have to be the one to solve the problem. No Republican wants to actually publicly disagree with Trump. They just hope that some third party or act of God will come in and fix things. So if they could keep telling the big lie, but then behind the scenes get Trump to back off, then they get the outcome they actually want and don't risk losing their viewership along the way. They, like Rupert Murdoch might have slightly more principles than like Laura Ingram or Tucker Carlson, at least theoretically, he didn't really push for any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But he's not actually gonna risk any of his massive wealth by putting it on the line by actually taking a stand when it comes to what the network is saying. In our members only bonus episode, I wanna get into Murdoch's divorce related stuff that Sherman reported on. It's juicy, it's a little bit salacious, tyt.com. Yeah slash join to become a member, tyt.com slash join to become a member. John and I will talk about it for our members later. I hope it's not too salacious. Episodes. It is about Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> I mean, don't worry. <laughs> You're gonna wanna know, it's fascinating. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get Playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.